Oh, it's empty. No. News time! Hi everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. it's Mike here and welcome to our another weekly news update. I'm not sure what I need this, but in this week we have a lot of set unveilings. Uh, Brickhead's uh, solo movie has official pictures for their set, so that's pretty awesome. And a number of other things also happened in the LEGO world, I'm gonna be talking about that as well. But before we jump into all the news, let's check out this week's Amazon deals. Amazon LEGO sales of the week remain to be in the superhero line, you can still get those sets 20 to 28% off. Also another cool set popped up, the Batwing from the LEGO Batman movie is 28% off as well, the best price I've seen for this guy so far. One cool bit of news on Amazon is that the UCS Millennium Falcon set number 75192 is still available on Amazon as of this recording with a normal price of $800. So get yours while you can, all the links are below, if you use those links to buy anything from Amazon we get a small commission so that supports the channel. First, let's check out what's happening in the new sets uh, news. We have new Brickheads unveilings for the Infinity War. Marvel Infinity War Brickheads are coming quite soon, hopefully somewhere around or before the movie comes out in April. And that being said, we have four characters incoming. This one here is the Iron Man Mark 50, set number 41604. That is Brickhead number 35. The new armor features the Iron Man's thrusters that we have seen in the set from, for example, the Thanos Ultimate Battle. And that is the first time we see this armor in in the movie. Obviously I assume the price for this one and the rest of those guys will be $10 each. And the next one here is Thanos, he's gonna be the same size even though it's a bigger guy but hey Brickheads are pretty much unified so the same size as the other ones. He obviously gets his infinity gauntlet and that is kind of a weird thing, it should be a bit oversized than that what it is. I think there's just a simple tile print to show all the infinity stones and that's about it. He does however get a more beefy arms on swivels and that is what differs him from most Brickheads actually. The prints are nice for the neck area and the simple face in purple. At least I think it's gonna be a quite rare color to have because it doesn't appear quite often, if at all. That is Brickhead number 36, set number 41605, also 10 years plus recommendation and presumably a $10 price. Next we have Star Lord, first time ever we see this guy in a Brickhead form. He doesn't have Chris Pratt's face but the mask that Star Lord is wearing and that makes his unique look. That is Brickhead number 37, the set number is 41606. I like the handlebar piece for his uh, breathing apparatus of some sorts and nice print matching the eyes for his uh, visor or targeting system whatever that thing is. He comes with a simple uh, set of tiles for the printed jacket and also those two pistols pretty much the same parts that we get in his minifigure form. The last one is Gamora in her new outfit for the Infinity War movie. The most catching point of her appearance is obviously her hair dyed in black and some purple and that actually shows very well on a brickhead form but still the build is very nice plus the lime green uh, tiles for her face with some simple printed detailing for some things on her face as well and she comes with a katana also i like those cheese tiles or something in the back that shows her skirt so overall i think it's gonna be a fun collection of brickheads to include four additional ones to what we already have and i think as jack mentioned in the last week's news episode about the rumors of the upcoming brickheads we may very well get over a hundred characters by the end of 2018 and i wouldn't be surprised all right moving on more set official unveilings finally we have the pictures for the solo star wars story uh, sets just gonna go through them real quick because we have reported on that before and here is the box art for the jedi and clone troopers battle pack 75206 with 102 parts and $15 price. Next one is the Imperial Patrol Battle Pack box art set number 75207. 99 parts inside for $15 as usual per battle pack. I like those new Stormtroopers, those are called the Range Troopers. Then we have a very anticipated set, finally Yoda's Hut 75208 officially shown. 229 pieces for $30. And I think this set will sell out because of what minifigures we have included. Yoda, I'm not sure if he's gonna be new, but we get the new Luke Skywalker and finally R2D2 with his mud printed when he falls into the swamp. The next one here is the Han Solo Land Speeder 75209 with 345 parts for $30. Minifigs are Kira, Han Solo and the Corellian Hound, a new mold. Few nice features here and there, I think they're gonna be an removable engine that Han Solo can fix in his spare time. Maybe that's where he learned how to fix the Millennium. Falcon constantly breaking but otherwise I think the set will be fun and I want to really see how this new Corellian Hound looks like in your hand. The bigger speeder of this line the Molox Land Speeder 75210 with 464 parts for $40. We have two additional Corellian Hounds for your collection includes also Moloch and Rebolt minifigures. 
Imperial TIE Fighter set number 75211 has 519 parts for $70. This set has uh, 4 minifigures, the Mimbian Stormtrooper, Imperial Pilot, Han Solo and Tobias Beckett. I think the Mimbian Stormtrooper might be a really cool fig, it looks kind of like a Phasma, I think his outfit is a bit of a grey one. Han Solo has his awesome pilot outfit, I can see this figure being quite a nice addition to the collection. And overall I think just the minifigs are the best part of this set because again the TIE Fighter is not really that appealing for me. And for the big sets we finally have the Castle Run Millennium Falcon 75212 shown so many times already. Minifigures include Kira, Han Solo, Chewbacca, Lando Carlisian, Kwai Tolsite, Castle Operations Droid and the DDBD. And also from the box art you can finally see how the Falcon opens up. And the whole nose design that is different than the original Falcon seems to be a sort of an escape pod, which I was quite surprised about and I think once you disconnect it, it kind of goes back to the normal Falcon look that we are all used to. So that's one mystery solved and another one would be how the Falcon turned grey from being white. Also more buildable figs were finally unveiled, uh, joining the Darth Maul that was shown on the New York Toy Fair. This guy was uh, set number 75537 with 104 pieces for $30. But also we get two additional things to show, there is the Han Solo 75535 with 101 pieces. Not a big fan of this one but you know just a young Han Solo, we'll see how he performs in the movie. But the really cool thing that I was surprised how good it looks is the range true 75536 with 101 pieces as well and I mean look at this it looks quite awesome like a beefy character from Halo or some other Warhammer or something seems to be packing a very thick armor compared to the normal Stormtrooper and I just love the look of this helmet it looks pretty darn awesome and that might be actually one of my favorite big figs of all time I mean he just looks amazing all right guys but that is it for the um, set unveilings for this week now we have something more sad Lego group has announced their 2017 annual report but the saddest part point of this report is that this is the first time in 12 years that the profits have declined and net profit dropped by a whooping 17%. The report also shows the top selling themes that include the Lego City, Star Wars, Duplo Creator Friends, so they are kind of keeping things okay. But before we jump to the numbers you have to be aware that the actual complete toy market is in the decline for the last few months, so it's not only that Lego is losing, everyone is pretty much having a slow time right now. But let's look at the numbers for a second here the revenue for the full year decreased by 8% hovering around 35 billion Danish crowns compared to the 37.9 billion last year I mean the year before that would be 2016 the operating profit is down to 10.4 million compared to 12.4 million in 2016 that is a mentioned 17% decrease, that's a lot. The net profit for the full year is down to 7.8 billion Danish crowns compared to the 9.4 billion in 2016. And the cash flow is lower from 10.7 to 9.1 billion, that is also a drop. The report also explains that it's part to the huge investments that LEGO was doing in uh, renewable energy sources, the opening of the LEGO house and uh, huge investments on the side as well. But also the group was performing a huge cleanup of inventories across the value chain Chain. so that of course uh, directly impacts the revenue in the chain. But I think even though the numbers are down, the Lego group does know what they're doing. Niels B. Christiansen, the group's CEO, said that uh, there will be a challenging year to fix all this, but they are performing quite well still and they are, you know, just making solutions to make sure that 2018 is a year of growth or at least a year of less drops. There was a nice trend happening in the end of 2017 with the Christmas and just holiday sales going up so this trend should continue and the Lego just seems to be going forward with their products and I don't think they are really in trouble but I just think with the business of this magnitude you just have to be aware of your things and just not to repeat mistakes from the past. Also remember that they had two massive movies that were huge investments, the Lego Ninja Jago movie and the Lego Batman movie that did not perform very well and that must have also been a significant impact on what the numbers are for 2017. There is also a massive potential in China as the group um, scored pretty much double digits growth in 2017 and that is a very expanding market for them. So overall I don't think there is a time to panic, I think Lego is doing quite well still given the fact that all the other toy companies are having problems as well and we're just happy to continue to support their efforts and just enjoy the sets as we always used to. It will be interesting to see what the results are for the 2018 i hope they will be a bit better than that all right but more to the positive things there is a new contest on the lego rare brick that is one to decorate the lego house in billund denmark people can now join to build vignettes in nature and minifig interiors to be featured as a display in the lego house for a year the winners will win assigned to 1037 lego house set that we are happy uh, owners 
off, it's a great set. And if you win with uh, more than one entry, you will also get to choose a one $75 set additionally. I'm gonna leave some links with all the details and the link to the contest below. The deadline to submit your entries for this one is April 6, 2018. And before I jump into the idea section, I also want to highlight a really cool video that was shown on YouTube by one of my favorite creators, Andrew Huang. This guy is an extremely talented music maker and just a crazy YouTube channel overall. Check him out, I'm gonna leave the link below. But apparently he's working with Lego now and he also made a video about making music with Lego. And just go check it out, I'm not gonna spoil it to you, you're gonna be amazed. And now let's take a quick look at the LEGO Ideas, a platform for you to submit your creations, then people vote for them and you gain enough support, 10,000 supporters, then LEGO may make it a set. No new sets approved this week for the review stage, but there is one really cool one that I want to highlight, the LEGO Typewriter from Steve Guinness. His last name is pretty genius, if I may say, but this guy is a perfect ideas project. And for all the younger fans, this is how a typewriter looks like. It's the keyboard of the old days, as I may say. So you were putting paper and punching letters as you go. If you made the mistakes, then you had to begin from the beginning. I just said that. And I think it's a perfect idea as projects because it's very educational. I think this is a great case to show people and younger fans especially what the technology looked like back in the days. And it's so funny to say because I remember those machines and I'm so surprised that many people don't know what it actually is nowadays. It's surprising but it's true. And I think this project will just show the a bit of a, you know, history of technology, of typewriting. The model itself is just great and it actually has some working functions. And the designer is actually quite accomplished in what he does because he was featured on the LEGO Masters TV show in the UK for example with this build. So I think go support it, it's very well worth it. And also I want to shortly highlight this project from LEGO 7 that is one of my favorite creators on Flickr that I keep showing in my top 10 mocks videos. He decided to put his hot dog van into the ideas platform and I think that is what really needs support. An excellent track for your city so just go click that support button. Alright guys and that is it for this week's news update, thank you so much for watching, as always you can leave a like below and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video, thanks so much for watching again, it was Mike and I'll see you again on BrickVault.